connecting with nature, with love and devotion, a trusting companion, built high on emotion, a good horse and rider, a patiently trained. In 1926, Purina established its working farm in Gray Summit, Missouri to support product development and feed trials. Today it's known as the Purina Animal Nutrition Center. This season of riding horses, we've got a four-year-old granddaughter play gun that was born and raised there that we're gonna use to give you an in-depth, week-to-week look at our approach with our horses. Her name is Holly Seven Petals. We call her Miss Purina. Purina has been the number one reason our horses have stayed healthy and sound over the last 10 years. So for me to have this opportunity to use one of the horses that they've had at their farm for research is pretty special to me. So join us as we introduce Miss Purina to this new chapter in her life and let you see her transformation through our program. Our horses work hard for us every day, so nutrition is a major concern. I've relied on Purina horse feed products for over 12 years. Purina is always on the leading edge of research and nutrition innovation, and with their feed guard system, I know I can rely on the safety and quality of their products from coast to coast. No matter what you do with your horse, Purina has the right product for you. Visit horse.purinamills.com or find them on Facebook for more information. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's show, Riding Horses. We're gonna do something a little different this week. We, we actually shot a colt starting demonstration that we did last year here in Medicine Lodge, Kansas for the Kansas Championship Ranch Rodeo. And that setup was a little different than what we typically do, so we thought we'd let you guys see it. We're gonna break it into a two-part series. This, this colt starting took place right after I had a back injury, so this was the first time I'd been on a horse in two months. And I had a, a good friend of mine, Jacob Stebbins. You guys remember Jacob and Chelsea. They were in some earlier episodes last season with us. Jacob was kind enough to bring this colt. He was also kind enough to help me in this colt starting demonstration. So he was the one that actually got on this colt. But it's kind of unique because we had an hour and a half setting where we not only have to work with this colt, but we've got to saddle him and ride him for the first time. That's not usually what we're filming. We're usually showing you guys how to be more diligent about each step and not put a time limit on it or rush through it. But this will give you guys a chance to see how horses typically react because a lot of times when we're down here filming and we are being a little bit more precise about what we're doing, we give that horse time to make that change in his mind before we just crawl on. Well, we spent enough time with this colt to get him comfortable enough we could get him saddled and then, then we threw Jacob up there and let the crowd see what horses typically act like when their mind isn't completely prepared. So we thought we'd let you guys have a look at this. Hope you enjoy it. Have y'all been having a good day today? Did y'all enjoy the peace treaty? Darren, we don't accept no. A lot of things going on here this weekend. Peace treaty, I'm not even sure if it's completely over yet, but uh, they've asked me to start on time, so I think we're pretty close to time. We'll go ahead and get started. My name's Kerry Kuhn. It's a pleasure to be here. I, uh, this, this is a tough place for me because I grew up here, so uh, I'm, I'm still trying to run from my past, but the Lord keeps bringing me back here, so here I am. I've been blessed to travel all over this nation and Canada and help people with their horses. I've been stuck in this particular setting where we've got a short amount of time to start a horse, probably more than any other setting I've been in as I've traveled around, and it's not always the, it's not always the best case scenario but my goal tonight is to let you guys watch this horse and maybe see if there's anything that you could that you could take home with you. Anything that you could learn from, <clears throat> you know, I'm not gonna say just in respect to your horse, but the more, the more time I spend around these horses, the more time I figure out that every time I'm, I'm struggling with my horse, it's because he's acting just like me. 
And that's not always the easiest thing for me to swallow. But So I'm going to go through this <clears throat> as best I can in this time frame and just try to walk you guys through the process of trying to build a little different frame of mind. Jacob, a good friend of mine right over here, he's going to come help me with this cold. I hurt my back the 1st of July. I haven't been on a horse but five times. Right now is the fifth time since the 1st of July. So I'm not going to crawl on him. Jacob's going to crawl on him for me tonight, but we're going to get him ready. And if I'm correct, Jacob, this is a four-year-old. You guys handled him a little bit a while back, but you never did saddle him or anything. <clears throat> Jacob's word that he used over there next to the trailer, I'm thankful that I don't have to flower it up. He, <laughs> he referred to him as a tyrant. And unfortunately, that brings me back to my past here. So when I introduce myself, <clears throat> best case scenario when you're starting a horse that we've noticed is to give that horse the opportunity to leave, to not just tie yourself to him right off the bat. So many people have caught on to the benefits of using the round pin, and what this round pin lets me do is it lets me introduce myself to this horse with an approach that makes it easier for my horse to accept what I'm gonna what I'm gonna bring into the picture. By design, not by Mother Nature, but by God's design, this horse was created in a manner to where if he gets bothered, he's gonna use the number one gift God gave him, which is his speed, and he's gonna try to leave. Now, if he's wired that way, guys, and I know that. Why wouldn't I make use of it? <clears throat> if my horse all the way down to his DNA is telling me that I need to leave if I get bothered, why would I think I can change everything if I just make him stay? So all I'm doing right now is just showing him what I'm after more than anything. And I was fixing to say it's not that hard to get one saddle. Jacob's saddle weighs about 30 more pounds than mine, so it might be Jacob saddling this rascal. <clears throat> But I'm not interested in how quiet this horse can be standing still. <clears throat> the whole goal to get on one, in my mind, once I get up there, I ought to be able to go longer and faster than before I crawled up there. That horse ought to be, he ought to be useful. Okay, and I've, I've sat on a lot of horses that I've thought, you know what, I'd be better off if I just get off on foot. I might be able to head that cow better on foot. Or I crawl on one and all they want to do is complain about what I'm asking them to do. So here's just a little bit of an introduction to me and this horse as to what I'm really going to try to offer him. And that's some place to go. Let him check out this whole pen. Let him get a feel for where this fence is. I've, I've, I've walked into and I've rode a horse into many around pin and as I'm walking into the center the colt that's that's loose in there is trying to crawl over the the other side and I've had several of them jump out I've had several of them just tear the panels down and take off clearly this colt isn't to that spot mentally this horse has been handled enough he's not thinking humans just gonna eat him but sometimes it makes it a little harder when you got a horse like this that has been handled some and he's been spoiled a little bit so let me ask you guys a question how would you define spoiled how would you define spoiled? So he stops here. I give him a little minute. I'm just, I'm just moving. I'm just placing myself in certain spots to get this colt to go certain spots. He doesn't know it, but I'm all already establishing some control of where he's going. <clears throat> I used to come in and I used to be, I mean, I wouldn't be in here three minutes. I'd have a rope on one. I used to come in a lot stronger than I do now. I'm starting to learn through all the mistakes that I've made. And I'm not going to just say with horses, but probably more so than anything with people. How do you build a rapport with somebody? Walk around like a tyrant all day? Walk around like a dictator? It's my way or no way? It sure doesn't work in a marriage. So I'm trying to relate See him take a big deep breath right there. Ears are moving. 
as I travel around and do clinics this year, every clinic that I've gone to, I've handed everybody a six-page outline of all the things we're going to work on. And at the bottom of the first page, it says, the most important time you will invest with your horse is when I go to catch him. The most important time I will invest in my horse is when I go to catch him. And that's what I'm working on right now. What I want to catch is I want to catch his attention. I'm sick and tired of riding horses that have absolutely no regard for where I'm at, what I'm doing, what I'm asking for, or even my safety, because their attention is as far from me as it can be. If I can catch his attention, then it's not that hard to teach him something. So I've been pretty easy to start with. I'll liven up a little bit with this flag and just squeeze in on him. All I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a feel for where he's at to see what he can handle and what he mentally can't handle. All I'm trying to do is get him more mentally prepared to handle a little bit more pressure. He doesn't have to be perfect. He doesn't have to have a clue about what I'm asking him to do. He doesn't have to have a clue. If I can get him in a frame of mind where he's willing to follow my lead, then I can lead him anywhere, guys. But are you tying a, a halter on your horse and hanging a lead rope on it, just trying to lead that horse from point A to point B, and you're really not concerned about what that horse is thinking as you take him with you? We do it with our kids all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm the father of three boys. And, and that's probably my hardest issue is in my busy lifestyle to keep from just dragging my boys with me with no regard to what they're thinking, what they're needing from me. If you own horses and you own children, is it okay if I say that if you own children? If you own horses and you own children, then them children are going to help your horsemanship get better. And them horses are going to help your parenting skills get better. If you learn to find the relation between the two. So I'm just squeezing in on him here a little bit. Now, by God's design, these horses are supposed to leave. They tend to be claustrophobic. And until, until somebody helps them change that frame of mind, you ever seen a horse, you get him in a tight spot and he just blows up? You ever sat on one of them? You didn't realize it until it was too late? So I'm checking that out too here, just as I squeeze in on him a little bit. I need him to where he's not so claustrophobic because when Jacob crawls on him, Jacob's going to have a leg hanging off of each side. So there's not going to be a lot of room. There's not going to be a lot of room. It's going to be pretty tight. And that's how my horse is going to look at it. That horse looks back and sees half my body hanging off each side. There's not a lot of wiggle room there. If I don't have his mind ready, then we might start the bronc riding a little early. Riding horses each day is a horse lover's dream. With all the hauling and training we do each year, we put a lot of stress on our horses. Since adding Forco to our feeding program to help maintain the digestive system, our horses have never looked better, acted better, or performed as well as they do now. We are very excited to be bringing on board Lisa's Western Wear in Pratt, Kansas as a new team member here at Kerry Coon Horsemanship. Lisa's Western Wear has the latest in Western fashions for men and women. They have a great selection of jeans, shirts, boots, hats, children's apparel, jewelry, 
western style home decor, as well as a full line of ropes and tack. They also carry the snaffle and transition bits that we use in our program that we feel are so important in building that proper foundation. So if you're looking for something western, check them out at leaseswesternware.com or if you're in the area, be sure to stop in and see them. Now having another horse in here, my goal with this tonight is once I'd tie myself to this horse is to let this one pull around on him and not pull around on me so much, just for the sake of my back. But I've noticed in some of the places that I've been, it's always fun when I go somewhere and they set up a round pin out in a parking lot right next to a six lane highway. And all I'm hoping is well, when I get on him, I hope he stays in the pen at least. And what I've noticed, man, you can really, you can really, really help a colt relax just by having another horse in here. This big brown gelding to my brothers is quite the babysitter. He packs my six-year-old son. He packs their little boy too. So there's an enormous amount of confidence that this little colt's going to pull off this horse just for me having him in here. Now, I'd say I missed, but I'm going to say I didn't intend to catch him. Actually, I did. And believe it or not, I grew up with a rope in my hand. But think of it like this way. I've seen, I've seen people get their horses where you could swing a rope off of them, but if anything went south, you bump that colt at all the wrong way, and they just blow up. Now, here's what I want you guys to see with that right there. Ask yourself, how many spots in my life do I have that I'm trying to protect? that I'm trying to protect from somebody else. I might even be trying to protect that spot from my spouse. <clears throat> a spot that I don't like anybody else being in because it tells an awful lot about what I'm thinking. I grew up with my parents telling me about certain spots on these horses to stay away from. That was one of them under their tail. What I need to do guys is I need to, I need to look at this horse the same way I look at myself in the mirror every morning and ask myself, if somebody called me out on that spot, would I be willing to change my mind? Would I be willing to change my mind? That's all I'm going to ask of this little horse. So there shouldn't be anywhere. You, got, you watch these cowboys tonight at this rodeo. Handling these horses, roping them cattle. If I'm going to bring a rope out here and use it and benefit from it, then I need to look at it this way. There shouldn't be one place on this horse's body that I couldn't tie this rope and get this horse to follow a field because if there is, wherever that spot is, he's going to have a protective frame of mind, a protective train of thought saying, I need to protect myself from whatever he might do right here. The thing is, you look at all them spots on that horse's body, when I'm sitting where I'm at right now, guys, I'm not very far from any one of them spots. Well, my horse is, my horse is amazing, just you just you can't touch his ears. Well, where am I sitting when I'm on him? And there's going to be a lot of times I'm going to be repositioning this horse's head, trying to reposition the rest of his body. And all I'm doing is I'm bringing them ears closer to me. I've been bucked off so many colts in the past because them horses had such a protective frame of mind in two spots. Two spots. But I tell myself, my saddle's going to sit here, okay? 
My saddle's going to sit here. You watching the bronc riding tonight, they'll put a flank strap on them broncs. And you watch, as soon as that cowboy comes off, their goal is to get that flank strap off that horse as quick as they can. Don't want to leave it there any longer than we have to. The horse might get used to it. It's put there to help that horse maybe kick a little higher when he's bucking. So think about that. What am I trying to get my horse to think? What do I want this horse to be thinking before Jacob crawls up here? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go at this colt any different than if I was the one crawling up here. If I don't feel like he's ready for me, I'm not gonna ask Jacob to get up here. But my def definition of ready for me might be different than my definition of ready for somebody else. Everybody's at a little different spot. Experience level, knowledge, confidence. It plays a big factor when you're dealing with these young horses. Because what I'm trying to build in this horse is I'm trying to build some experience. I'm trying to build some, some knowledge knowledge to the fact of maybe not just being so here's here's an interesting way to look at the horse how many of you have heard somebody talk about the horse as being a prey animal not a predator a prey animal meaning meaning they walk around in life just waiting for that predator to jump out and eat them have you guys heard that? I grew up hearing it. But I look at it a little different now. As I'm trying to see myself in these horses, I look at it this way. What my horse really struggles with is what I struggle with the most. And that is I am one selfish rascal. So I look at my horse saying, <clears throat> what could I do to get my horse in a frame of mind where he didn't act or react so selfishly. How can I say my horse looks selfish? Go put him in a position where he's really, really bothered, really, really bothered, and scare the daylights out of him. And see if he stands there and looks at you and says, okay, what do you need first? Because this is really scaring the life out of me, but I'm I'm going to handle what I'm going to give you what you need first before I react to it. You know, people get hurt every day. Every day, people get hurt with horses like this, because those horses, yeah, they are prey animals. But the manner in which they respond to things is exactly how I respond to things in a selfish manner. I'm concerned about myself first. I suggest to people all the time to look a little deeper and try to figure out. What is it my horse needs more than anything else? What's the one thing in life my horse needs from me more than food and water? Because there's something every horse on this planet is looking for more so than food and water. The crazy thing is we're all looking for it too. Just we don't always want to admit it. Anybody have any idea? What would y'all say? What's your horse looking for more in life than food and water? They say three days is about max on a horse with no water. I haven't tried it. But that sounds about right to me. I'll go with it. In the middle of the summer, three days and he's probably done. But you take him off water in the middle of August when it's 105 degrees out and you leave him for two days, and then you carry some water out there to him, <clears throat> and you set that bucket of water down in the middle of his pen, and then as he's walking up there to get him a drink, you bring out the one object that's always scared that horse the most in the past, and you see if he just calls a timeout and says, hold on, hold on, I ain't had water in two days. Let me get a drink first, and then I'll spook. Let me go ahead and get a drink first, and then I'll leave. Is that how they respond? Not the ones that I'm dealing with. They know they can't go much longer without that water, but yet they'll leave it because they don't feel secure enough to stay. 
So security is what we're finding that people are missing. How do I offer my horse some security? Well, confidence sure helps. Knowledge sure helps. Experience sure helps. I am called to lead the way. I'm going to mention quite a bit about the design of these horses. By design, they are designed to follow my lead. It says it in the book of Genesis. What does that look like? I don't believe we're supposed to lead in a manner where we're just taking advantage of them. We can. I did it for years. Here, I'm just squeezing in on him, and I'm staying here a little bit longer because I want to see where his mind goes. I, I'm trying to figure out where's the point where he might say, no, that's too much. I'm not going to run from it, okay? I'm not going to try to hide from that spot where my horse says, oh, no, 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 no. I can't handle any more of that. In all honesty, at our clinics, we're trying to get people to go find that spot before you crawl on. Quit waiting until you get up there to look for it. Everybody complains about it. Nobody wants to do anything about it. Well, sounds like life to me. Doesn't really sound like we're talking about horses there. Everybody wants to complain about the situation they're in, but nobody wants to do anything about it. So I'm looking for the spots where my horse, where his mind might just shut off. So I stay with him a little bit longer right here. Gives me a little bit a little bit more of a feel for how much he's going to lean on me or Jacob. When I squeeze in here and I stay in here, where's the mind go? I come in here on this skeleton of my brothers, and I've got the ability to get this horse used to a person up here at this level off the ground. what I'm looking for right there so I found it see I found that spot where he just quit where his feet got stuck and where'd I go I didn't try to force him out of it I just waited on him who wants to be patient then you ask for something you didn't get what you asked so you're just gonna you're just gonna speak a little louder right then and hope you can get what you asked for how do I build trust in my horse if all my approach is doing is saying I couldn't care less about you? Because I look at it this way. I can build trust in this horse by taking him to that spot where he gets stuck and staying there with him and say, I ain't going nowhere. And you can stay in this spot for as long as you need to. My role is to be here and help you find a way out. My role is to be here and try to help you find a different train of thought, so to speak. Riding horses each day is a horse lover's dream. The Kerry Coon Training Halter is designed to eliminate the rolling effect from a lateral pull to help keep your halter in place at all times. With sliding rings to ride with, it works with the rider to pinpoint pressure where it will help the most. I know you love your horse too. Many of you have bought the horse drinker from Bar Bar A to provide fresh and safe water to all of your horses. Standing water creates algae and stale tasting water. The horse drinker is like drinking from a mountain spring. As a result, your horses will drink more and that means healthier horses. With no electricity, you won't be receiving any electric bill for your drinker. Protect the horses you love with the horse drinker from Bar Bar A. Call now. My goal is to wait on him and be patient and say, I'm not going nowhere, we'll wait on you. I send my boys to school and I find out they're struggling in their classroom. And I find out that that teacher looks at my boys and says, this is ridiculous. It shouldn't take you that long. All these other kids are finding it quicker than that. You must be dumb. You must be slow. Instead of sitting there 
every horse is a little different. Everybody's kids are a little different. Instead of looking at it and saying, you know what? Whatever you need. Sad part is, anymore, I feel for those teachers. Man, it's hard when you got that many kids in that short amount of time. And you got one kid that needs a little bit more life, or a little bit more life, a little bit more time. Where do you find it? So I'll look at it this way. Five minutes invested with that kid in the right frame of mind, in a patient frame of mind, in a willing frame of mind to be there and make sure that kid understands nothing more than this. There's nothing more important than for that student to understand this. I'm not here to force this on you, and I'm not here to try to speed it up. I get a paycheck to stand here and help you, to sit here and help you, to wait on you. Little spot right here with my flag that this colt was a little bit bothered. So I just kept going back there, just waiting, just seeing if this horse could find a little different train of thought. This horse being handled some, obviously, in my mind, so far speeds this process up quite a bit. It's not uncommon for us to be in a situation where we need an hour just to get where we, where we can get our hands on that rascal. This is a spot down here. It's got me bucked off many times. Right here where this cinch is going to be. You want to complain about your horse being 13 years old and he's still cinchy? I'd love to say do something about it, but what I'd really like to say is how come it took, if you started him as a two-year-old, how come it took 11 years to bother you? Why didn't we notice it before he was 13? Because by the time he gets that old and he's still carrying that train of thought, it's only going to be worse. I think the reason the Lord has put us in a situation where we've done more cult starting than anything else across this country is to help people understand if you can get a horse started off on the right, on the right foot, and when I, when I say the right foot, what I'm really referring to, when I can get him in the right frame of mind to begin with, guys, I might invest a little bit, a little bit more time in the beginning building it, but what I'm going to end up with is something that's going to let me make a lot of progress down the road and my horse being a frame of mind where he can handle the pressure that we add to the picture every day. I'm 40 years old. I made a living for over 20 years training horses for the public. And I, I'm thankful for every horse that I set on and I'm learning to be thankful for the horses that really acted like me, that really had some anger issues, that were really impatient. I'm thankful now. I wish, I wish I could go back on some of them horses and do it again because my train of thought today, I feel like I could be a whole lot more help than I was at that time. But where I was at in my life, it, that horse was a stepping stone for me to to try to figure out what in the world the Lord was trying to say to me. And I, when I refer to a horse as a stepping stone, I'm not trying to say I was just using him. I was trying to do the absolute best I could at the time. But there were a lot of things I just didn't know any better. And the more I handle them, the more I figure out, the more spots I still have that I don't know any better. So this is, this is really good right here. See, this is going to be pretty close to what this horse is going to experience with a rider. Here I am right here next to his right or his left side and I got these chinks sliding up and down on the right side. Jacob, you want to come here for a sec? I'm going to give you this gilding for a second if you'll just hold him outside the pen here.
I'm going to spend a little bit of time with him here on the ground because it's, it's a whole lot easier to saddle one from the ground. I've saddled some off of another horse. I've had some that that was the only way I could get them saddled. I sure didn't want to be standing here. Noise and movement, two things that really bother a horse. Okay? What Jacob needs to have, or whoever's going to ride this horse, needs to have the freedom to get up there and move around, make some noise. And my horse's train of thought not get so protective that all he's trying to do is get rid of the rider because he doesn't think he can survive it. If I had to pick, guys, if I had to pick between crawling on a bronc that they use at the rodeo out of one of them chutes over there, <clears throat> or a colt that somebody just saddled for the first time and they didn't have him in a frame of mind where he was confident enough to handle a rider, I'm picking that bronc every day. Every day. Because what I have learned, see, most of those horses have done it long enough. They ain't doing it because they're in that protective frame of mind. They'll breed them rascals to buck. They'll teach them how to buck. And some of them horses get really good at it. You crawl on that colt for the first time and your behind hits that saddle and all that colt's thinking about doing is saving his own life. Man, it's a miserable place to be sitting because it doesn't matter what I do. Doesn't matter what I do, and he's in that frame of mind, it's a mess. This colt might make it look too easy, Jacob. So we started with this rope back here under his tail before I put that saddle up here. I'm going to check this out down here just to make sure that he's familiar with something that might feel similar to what that cinch is going to feel like. But I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to work on his train of thought. This is a spot. I mentioned that flank strap on these broncs tonight. So if I pick up on that, So what's that mean? We just ride him bareback? Thank y'all for laughing. I thought y'all were going to sleep. You know what that is, guys? That's a spot he isn't familiar with. We're just going to get him familiar with it. <clears throat> but more than anything, okay, my cinch is going to be right here. He was showing the same thing with that flag, okay? Now, any of this area down here, guys... I want to make sure I know what this end's doing so I can keep myself from getting kicked. Or at least up my odds a little bit. But I got from here all the way to here. I need to work all that. My back cinch is going to hang about there. But here's what I find interesting. The train of thought my horse brings up when I go here. Now... Wouldn't it be nice if I could get him in a frame of mind where I bothered him a little bit like that and he looked at me and said, what do you need? Tell me what you need first because what I really need to do is go run around here and kick, buck. I need to leave. But I need to know what you need first. He didn't ask me that. And the only reason I bring that up, guys, is because I look back at all the horses I've set on and all the horses I've screwed up Because of my own selfishness. It was because of my own selfishness <laughs> that kept me from being willing to look at that horse and maybe see what he needs. So what do you notice? As I pick that up, he starts to put out less and less effort to get rid of it, doesn't he? Now, 
I have people tell me all the time, oh, I would never do that. I'm not ever going to teach my horse how to buck. Well, guess what? I'm just going to let you all in on a little secret. They can all do it. Okay? Some of them are a little better at it than others because some of them are a little better athlete, athletes than others. But as far as me trying to keep my horse from bucking, how many times have you sat on a horse and that's what you were doing the whole time you were up here, trying to keep them from bucking you off? That's called babysitting. I don't want to ride them horses anymore. And all I'm, all I'm going to say to this horse right here is you can go do whatever you feel like you need to with this. What you're going to find out, because I'm going to be patient enough to let you have some time to work on it, what you're going to find out is it's a whole lot more work to be bucking around there. Now, that's nice with him standing there quiet like that, but I'd rather see, I'd rather see him quiet while he's moving. Okay? I started this off with him loose, just moving him around, and that's a big deal to me. I want my horses to know that I'm interested in that more than anything else. See, here's my cinch. There's my cinch. How many times you pulled a cinch up on a colt and he jumps straight in the air and kick you in the belly as he goes by? If I'm going to stay in here close, I'm going to have a little bit shorter holt on my lead rope, okay, so I can keep his nose over here, so I can keep the front end of my horse coming to me, so I can get this end to go the other way. Now he put out a little bit of effort there, but I've seen Jacob ride enough that I'm thinking if that's all he's got, <laughs> but it doesn't have to be extravagant, guys. It doesn't have to be extravagant. Riding horses each day is a horse lover's dream. Hi, I'm Kerry Coon. If you own horses, you're familiar with fly problems. Shoe fly leggings are the best fly protection you'll find because they protect the most valuable part of your horse, their legs. Their simple and easy to use design helps to reduce stress on the joints, muscles, and tendons by preventing painful fly bites on the lower legs, which keeps your horse from standing around stomping all day. Made from a flexible plastic mesh, they do not restrict blood flow or range of motion and allow plenty of air circulation. So if you're looking for fly protection that has your horse's health in mind, shoe fly leggings is your best answer. Our horses wear them, you'll want your horses to wear them too. So check out your local feed or tax store or for more information, go to shoeflyleggings.com. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed part one of our colt starting demonstration that we did at the Kansas Championship Ranch Rodeo in 2015. <clears throat> we just got this colt ready to saddle, so you guys be sure and join us next week so you guys can see what kind of bronc ride Jacob gets to have. some horses but remember they need a leader to trust in to help them succeed oh let's ride some horses that look in their eyes so saddle me up and let's go for a ride say goodbye to the folks patch good boy <laughs>